Hello viewers and welcome to our film A Year with Märklin. It's good to be talking to you again. Last year too, the model railway world built up a fine head of steam and steam is where we want to begin with the most important new Märklin product in 2003, the P8, that wonderful engine that could tackle just about everything. So up with the curtain and let's give center stage to our Girl Friday, a locomotive from the Prussian region of Germany, first built in 1906. Almost a century later, the P8 has made the headlines again as a Märklin HO gauge model. It's been on sale since September 2003 and it's already gracing many an enthusiast's layout. The first P-8 took to the rails, as we have said, in 1906. In 1923, after Germany's Reichsbahn had been set up, the P-8 became the 38.10 series. But ever since then, enthusiasts have stuck loyally to the old name. This digital model is just about a perfect replica of the original. Smoke comes out of the chimney authentically when the optional smoke generator is fitted and the P8 starts away from a standstill in a magnificently authentic way, thanks to the motor with bell-shaped armature and flywheel. The P8 was a hit in its day. It may not have broken many speed records since it was limited to 100 kilometers an hour, but it was popular all over the country and within 22 years almost 3,800 P8s were built. Sales of the model, incidentally, have easily exceeded this figure, but that was perhaps to be expected. The model looks exceptionally neat and clean, as if it had just returned from a general overhaul. It would be a pity to overdo the authenticity and cover a model that looks as good as this with oil and soot. Most model railway fans like their engines clean, so that's the way we supply them. Series 31.10 locomotive pulled scheduled trains right up to the mid-1970s. Quite a few of them spent their last working years in the Baden-Württemberg region of Germany. They were based in Tübingen, Rottweil, Lauda and Heilbronn and ran on the lines through the Hohenlohe, the Danube Valley and the Black Forest. Photographers were determined people in those days. Once they had found the ideal vantage point, they stuck to it, come what may. The drivers of these engines were no strangers to hard work either. Werner Steigler, who rode a museum P8 again in the mid-80s, had a great affection for the lively Prussian lady and enjoyed his work. In the old days, the engine drivers wore white sand-up collars and one of them at least used to sport a bow tie. They had no facilities for washing apart from a bucket of water. In the evening, when the day's work was over, he used to scrub his collar to get it clean. You know, the kind with an elastic band. Als preußische Dame habe ich mich im Ländle ganz wohl gefühlt. Schließlich war ich jahrelang in Tübingen. I may be Prussian in origin, but I spent many years of my life in Tübingen. The engine shed there looked after me well, with plenty of coal and water, sand and oil. I certainly didn't starve. Und die P8, die war mir. The P8 was my favorite engine, certainly the best looking steam engine. With steam, you can feel the slightest gradient. The work up here isn't exactly easy. It's okay as a hobby, but all the time. The violent changes of temperature, the dirt, it wasn't the best way of earning a living. I'd sooner drive an electric engine any time. <laughs> Hark at him. 30 years ago, he swore to be loyal to the end. A typical man. As soon as some smart young woman goes past, he condemns you to the scrap heap. The 38-1772 didn't have such a dull career after all. Her last run was in the autumn of 1974, and crowds of people turned out to see her. And she even qualified for a television news item. The P8 was a welcome sight on Europe's rails, in front of both passenger and goods trains. And either the way she originally looked, or with the wind deflectors that were added later. Those who worked on the P8 had a high opinion of her, even after returning to the footplate many years later. I started on steam engines when I was only 21. To have a second chance at my advanced age is a marvelous thing and brings back the memories. 
Werner Steigler has restored the old P8 to steam. You never forget your first love. Everyone, grown up or still young, likes our girl Friday. The modest way she goes about her work, her charm and good looks. In addition to the P8 in HO gauge, there were some splendid new Merklin models in the top size category, gauge 1. Let's take a look at them now. Haldenwang, this is Haldenwang station. The train now arriving is for Schlüsselfeld. It's pulled by an electric locomotive, one that used to be a very normal sight on German rails, the E44. This was also something of a jack of all trades. Now it has taken on a new lease of life as the star of the 2003 Maxi program. The E44 has to run round its train in Haldenwang, a task that's a real pleasure for the model railway fan, thanks to the Telex couplings. Meanwhile, the passengers can enjoy the morning sun for a minute or two, or read their newspapers, or a whodunit. Let's hope nobody in the book crosses the lines without looking. The E44 has lost no time in coupling up to its train, but it can't leave yet because there's a connection to wait for. A genuine old-timer with a goods train, a treat for the photographers. E9108 waits here for some time, so perhaps the crew can have their breakfast, whereas the E44 has to leave for its return journey. The E91 has all kinds of extras built in for the Gauge 1 enthusiast. Super sound can be selected, and the two pantographs can be raised and lowered just like the real thing. These are the miracles that digital technology makes possible. Up with the pantograph, and off we go. Even the experienced observer may well ask whether this is a model or reality. It is in fact reality, but so neat and tidy that one could almost confuse it with Merklin's Gauge 1. The E44 and the E91, two veterans that still invite an admiring wolf whistle. Now for railway nostalgia brought to life again in 1 to 32 scale. As you would expect, both these locomotives are largely made of metal and of course have two motors. Let's stick to railway models for the moment, but in a rather more compact form. Here are some varied and entertaining film clips of highlights in the Merklin year. Early in February each year, the Nuremberg Toy Fair opens its doors and the model railways start to run. For the 54th time in 2003. It's a pity to bypass the many other interesting exhibits, but let's make straight for Hall 7A and the stand of the world's leading model railway manufacturer, Germany's most prominent shopkeeper and TV personality Rudolf Morshammer was there, complete with his dog Daisy. What confronted the visitors instead was a superb model of Berlin's Anhalter station. Now guess the scale. Here's a clue. This model is for the mini club fans. Yes, it's 1 to 220 scale. This is a table where they dish out the presents. In this case, a special one that people have wanted for a long time. A pantograph that goes up and down at the touch of a button. The new Merklin color light signals too shine forth magnificently. A perfect example of high tech in miniature. Can you see any wires? No not on what are surely the finest color signals on the market. The change from one aspect to another is also perfect and absolutely realistic. Just about every model railway enthusiast dreams of building a giant Merklin layout in the cellar at home, assuming he has one. Some people have the space, but are still hesitant because they claim to be all thumbs when it comes to building models. A big mistake. They often don't realize what skills they have, and that's where the Merklin seminars take over. 
three days of the finest do-it-yourself training with wood, paint and all the other tools and materials a model railway layout needs. Guided by seminar instructor Rudiger Haller, many people have discovered talents they never knew they had. Let's visit a seminar held at the Model Railway Exhibition in Merklingen, a town in South Germany. These seminars are held there three or four times a year, and the nicest thing of all about them is that you get to take your finished work home with you. Even inexperienced craftsmen are amazed at the results they achieve, and those who have been at it longer can try out a few new ideas. Everyone who takes part enjoys the seminar immensely. I want to improve my layout building work a bit. I've already got about a quarter of it finished, but I can't help feeling that I need to adopt a more professional approach. This is probably my twelfth seminar, but even if you go to two or three identical seminars, you still learn something new each time. It certainly pays off, if only because you get more confident about putting your ideas into practice. You don't hesitate anymore because you're scared of damaging something. The seminar shows you how to tackle the job the proper way. A bridge, a tunnel, a stream. Small dioramas built by their own fair hands. Congratulations, gentlemen. Now let's move to where the North Sea laps the shore and yellow flowers blossom in the green meadows, though often framed nowadays by large concrete hotel blocks. The seagulls cry, the storm winds blow, this is where I belong. You may not see it quite the same way as an inhabitant of Blankenberg on the Belgian coast, but it's certainly worth spending a holiday there or at least paying the town a visit. Blankenberg is unique. You won't find a pier like this one anywhere else in Europe. It took three years and a lot of money to renovate it, and now it's as good as new. This is Train City, a mixture of museum and theme park. The atmosphere is good with echoes of Charlie Chaplin's famous film Modern Times and the modern era is certainly present all the time even though the emphasis in the films and models is on the past. The good old days even if they weren't always quite as good as we imagine, come to life in various scales and with a variety of vehicles, some of them very famous. The Beetle and the Rheingold both make their rounds here. As well as a rolling stock and the layouts, there are tin plate locomotives, carriages and wagons, and a number of more recent exhibits too. This ultra-modern theme centre costs 23 million euros to build and equip. This is a genuine opportunity to discover the full-scale railway world and model railways too, in a very special and most impressive way. Train City opened its doors on June the 20th, 2003, to everybody's satisfaction, and with a festive feeling in the air. The young lady waving the red and green flag so determinedly has no political significance. Shortly afterwards, the barrier is raised and after a three-year rebuilding period, the bridge is open to the public again. In view of these crowds, who would dare to suggest that model railways are a dying hobby? We now have the most modern pier in Europe, an ideal place for Merklin to exhibit and demonstrate its model railways. Guests of honor were given an appropriate gift at the opening ceremony. A model locomotive is always welcome. Or some other item of rolling stock. Thank you well. 
and so the opening event nears its end with a sudden burst of sound. Christmas comes but once a year, so they say, and once a year since 1995, Märklin has unveiled a specially decorated locomotive. It was the first company in the model railway industry to have this popular idea, which has now developed into something of a tradition. On September the 6th, 2003, the latest unveiling ceremony was held at the Swiss Railway's Limmatal Marshalling Yard, just outside Zurich. While we're waiting, let's take a quick look at how it all works and the fascinating process of hump shunting and breaking the vans and wagons. Modern electronics have taken over a lot of the work, but some of it still has to be carried out by hand. Some of the tasks can only be performed manually and in many cases they call for a lot of strength. The trains have to be stretched, the couplings unscrewed and the air hoses disconnected on between 3,000 and 3,500 vehicles every day. The Limmatal marshalling yard is of central importance for trains bound for South Germany, Austria and Italy, but also for goods traffic within Switzerland itself. It's one of the most modern marshalling yards in the country. The technical principle is quite simple. A laser beam detects the speed of each wagon and calculates how strongly the brakes have to be applied as it runs down from the hump. But now it's time for the big event of the day. The unveiling is about to take place. Off comes the cover sheet and there it is. The 460-033 in all its new splendor. Applause for this ingenious idea of reproducing the precision instrument dials from the crocodile and the AE68 on the sides of the modern 460. The amateur, barometer and voltmeter symbolize the significance of electric rail traction in Switzerland from a very early period onwards, another jewel in the Märklin Swiss collection. There are five and this is the last one in the collection. That's rather sad, particularly when we look back at the astonishing variety of decors that have been applied to the 460 in recent years and the numerous layouts in which these models are already running. The Swiss railways, incidentally, have something important in common with these modelers. Almost all their trains are operated electrically, more than any other railway company in the world. Switzerland has very few natural raw materials and is therefore proud of its clean coal and its environmentally acceptable rail system. Merklin and the SBB have a long tradition to uphold and so I expect we shall come up with something new for our young and old fans in the years to come. We hope so too. It will give us something extra to look forward to. Now let's move to Stuttgart on the morning of the 28th of October. The weather is cool but the forecast is sunny rather like what we expect to hear from Merklin today, since it's time for the annual press conference. After ten years of exile in Frankfurt, this event has returned to its home region of Swabia. It's being held in the studio of the Landes Giro Casa Bank, which is easily reached on foot from Stuttgart's main station. What's this surprise awaiting us? It's Harry Potter and the train that takes him to boarding school at the beginning of every term, the Hogwarts Express. Everyone is in a cheerful mood. Is it because of the brilliant stroke that roped in Harry Potter to publicize Märklin or the other new products like the giant Anhalter station or the magnificent Gage 1 version of the Zero One? It may be that good operating results are about to be announced. Who knows? As it turns out, a whole series of encouraging news items were announced at the press conference. In 2002, turnover went up by 4% to 170.5 million euro. In addition, although some fans may find it hard to believe, Merklin has improved its ability to deliver. Germany's former president, Roman Herzog, once said, it's our ability to innovate that will decide on our fate. 
and speaking to the representatives of the media, Paul Adams assured them that Merkin has adopted this as its slogan too, regardless of any temporary economic recessions. The recession certainly makes things harder for us, but the more turbulent the times we live in, the more we discover that model railway enthusiasts, whether they treat their system as a toy or qualify as serious collectors, are looking for just one thing, relaxation in a hectic world. The model railway is ideal for the purpose. The press conference was held in a different city this year, and the company has also changed its sales approach on the model railway market. We're trying out something quite different. Customers who develop an interest in model railways often buy a cheap starter pack from a discount store. We aim to convince them that if they get seriously interested in our hobby, they should invest in an altogether stronger system. This could be Merklin or Trix, in which case we offer to buy back their discount supplier system in exchange for a Merklin starter pack, so that they have a system that will give them lots of pleasure for many years to come. Relax, the Hogwarts Express isn't about to burst out of the TV screen, as these super pictures might imply. Let's board Harry's unusual form of transport now and take a quick run to Munich, to the exhibition center, but first of all to the Deutschlandfunk radio station. Full steam ahead in the cellar or hobby room, ladies and gentlemen. The model railway exerts as strong a fascination as ever. Paul Adams and other model railway manufacturers were invited to take part in a discussion on the fascination of model railway. If you've never done so before, let me urge you to visit a model railway shop and take a close look at one of the locomotives, particularly a steam engine. It's pure emotion on wheels, technology you can see and experience in action. This roller test rig is intended for collectors who have showcases full of modern locomotives but no layout to run them on. To see truly impressive layouts you have to visit the International Model Railway Show. You can even learn, free of charge, how to keep the tracks clean. This is a Z-gauge system and we can't help agreeing with a young man we heard talking to his mother. It's all so small but it looks just like the real thing. Probably the only difference is that the steam engines don't run on coal. The control system uses only Merklin Mini Club components, a transformer for automatic supply to the track, block by block. The system uses switchable track circuits to control the train movements with a universal controller. It's the locomotives themselves, however, that are the center of attraction at every show. The insider models are particularly sought after. I must say I like the look of the insider models. It's tempting to order them for next year. Don't tell me, I've already ordered two. They're the kind of product that one would like to keep in the family and pass on to one's son. Plenty of youngsters come to the show looking for a chance to do something active. Here, for instance, by decorating a freight car. My favorite team is Real Madrid. An engine. It's not a football club, although it's called the first FC. Merklin's first FC is a fan club, with all kinds of articles to appeal to the fans. The Post regularly brings me magazines and brochures for the kids, and sometimes a model vehicle as well. Look here. This is the Bugs Bunny freight car, the 2003 gift to members of Merklin's first FC. None of these vehicles are on sale in the shops. They're only for FC fans. We're handing out free vouchers so that the kids can pick up a catalogue later and we're also planning a whole series of additional campaigns for young people. Volume 5 of the Harry Potter series was published in mid-November but by that time Merklin's Hogwarts Express was already in the shop windows. The school's model making competition has been held for the past three years. The school children form work groups and build sections of a model railway. Last year, almost a thousand children at 80 schools took part. Bavaria's Minister of Education, Monika Hohlmeier, regards the competition as a good idea. I think it's important for children to learn that there are other things as well as those you buy complete in the shops, things that have to be understood and put together by their own efforts. This year's winners came from the towns of Stadthagen, Stutensee and Duderstadt. For the first time, nursery school groups also took part. You can't start early enough. 
Insiders are people who know more, boilermakers and model makers alike. In view of this, the Märklin Insider Club was founded in 1994, the start of a success story with many fine models and club members all over the world. Insiders are model railway enthusiasts with a very strong interest in their hobby, who like to get their information from the source before it becomes generally known. Specially selected models are reserved for the insiders, so you can imagine how disappointed an outsider can be on discovering that they're not for him. He usually fills up an insider club membership form right away. The 2003 Insider model was a German Class 103. This legendary electric locomotive was the first to break the 200 km an hour barrier. The Model 2 breaks all records, at least as far as its technology is concerned. The computer animation shows us that the pantographs are not raised and lowered by magic, but mechanically, in response to electronic impulses. The Paizo motor is a remarkable little gadget, but also a major step forward on the way to even more authentic models. We have this year a this year we've come up with something very special, a high-tech Paizo motor to work the pantograph. The insiders have other advantages too, for instance travel offers, special events and extra facilities at exhibitions. Our Märklin magazine keeps them informed six times a year and in connection with the show and the 75th anniversary of the Rheingold that we're currently celebrating, we're offering insider club members a chance to ride in the original Rheingold train, a sign that we have become a single big family. It was a far-sighted decision on Merklin's part to set up the Insider Club in 1994 and gain the loyalty of the keenest model railway enthusiasts. An additional incentive is the program of models that only insiders are permitted to buy. This has started off a new collector's market. I wanted to own all the Insider models and in any case I used to buy the Merklin magazine. Another one among many thousands of Insider Club members, happy to be part of this big family, as father figure Paul Adams likes to describe it. Anyone who has a model like this running on their layout is telling the world, I was one of the very first members, and this is my reward for ten years of insidership. It's a proud title, even if this friendly gentleman evidently has a slight preference for American models. I certainly have a soft spot for American engines and I now own every one that Märklin has built. In this particular hobby basement, the American and German trains run alongside one another, sometimes pulled by insider engines, sometimes by more conventional ones. It's a fine world in which everything has its place, the Märklin Insider Club world with many contented members. Ten years of insider membership inspires us to see just where in the world the club members are to be found. We've even found some in South America. Collectors proud of their link with the Merklin name. Let's visit the first of these insiders in Santiago, the capital of Chile. He's a middle-aged gentleman who has retained his enthusiasm for Merklin for more than 30 years. Model railways are a hobby that I greatly value. It has been an important part of my life for about the past 35 years, particularly building up a collection of model railway vehicles.
In far off Chile, Max finds the Insider Club a great help in keeping abreast of developments in his favorite hobby. He learned about the club while surfing the World Wide Web. Uno, hace unos seis años atrás, eh, navegando por internet, que es algo. I was surfing the internet about six years ago, looking for interesting model railway homepages. That's when I discovered the Merklin Insider Club. I thought it was an offer worth following up and applied to join. As a member of the club, I have access to information and services that I would otherwise not be able to reach and I can buy models that not everyone has. Hints and information about digital control of Merklin's model railways interest me particularly. Without the Insider Club, this topic would be far more difficult for me to tackle. Back in the 1970s, Max visited Germany and was very impressed. He had my hair in Heidelberg for Loren. He lost his heart in Heidelberg. But back to our visitors. Unlike his two brothers, Max Jr. has inherited his father's enthusiasm for model railways. His dream is to create a giant railway landscape in the attic under the roof. But he plays enthusiastically with his digital system in the kids' playroom and already has his own favorites. Este, el, el the ICE, of course, and then the Series 10 steam locomotive, which I call the Krupp engine. I particularly like this engine's sound module. In Los Andes, about 70 kilometers northeast of Santiago, we meet up with the Medina family again. We join them on a visit to the local railway museum, which has a number of exhibits from important periods in Chilean railway history including one that is a special favorite of the lady of the house. I like this old rail bus because it reminds me of the buses that used to run in Santiago. It may look old, but this bus is actually in tip-top condition. It's remarkable how the entire family has taken up railways as a hobby, both the real thing and the models. Father and son took leave of us with a piece of useful advice. You simply must see the railway from Los Andes to Rio Blanco. We were glad of this hint and rode on a freight train loaded with ore from the country's largest copper mine as it wound its way through the breathtaking scenery. Nobody here seems to be in too much of a hurry and the Alco locomotives have also seen better days. This isn't a palace, but Retiro Station in Buenos Aires, the largest and most imposing station in the whole of Argentina. We're in Buenos Aires to meet two more Merklin insiders, but first of all, we plan to do a bit of sightseeing at the station, in the city, and among the crowds. Almost 12 million people live in this big city on the Rio de la Plata, but its heart beats fastest in the Boca, where the magic of the tango is stronger than anywhere else. Diego Maradona, one of the world's most talented footballers, is among the most notable sons of the city, which was established back in 1535. A giant obelisk in the city centre recalls its long history. And from there it's not far to where our next insider lives. Hola, bienvenidos a Buenos Aires. Pase. Hello, Senor Benveduti. We're visiting a second generation Merklin fan. There used to be a big layout at his parents' house. His attitude to his models is to treat them like miniature works of art, like statuettes. They're on display everywhere in the house, as individual items or whole rows of locomotives. 
As a child, I played with an electric model railway. I was given my first Märklin system when I was 11. That's also when I got my first Märklin catalog. It's now 44 years old. I used to read it and dream of owning all those magnificent engines and rolling stock. I got my first Märklin steam locomotive in 1962. It was a Series 23, number 3005. That's when I became a serious collector. A few stops away by historic tram, and we reach the house of Senor José Luis Borio, another insider, who was first bitten by the Märklin bug in the 1960s when his father took him on a visit to Germany. Just before they were due to fly back, he was presented with an electric train set, a Märklin. He still has it, and a few other items besides. I was fascinated by railways even when I was a child. An aunt of mine used to live close to Constitucion, the big terminal station. I would stand on the bridge over the tracks for hours and watch the trains come and go. I was fascinated and even dreamt about them at night. Ever since then, I've been a train lover. I was first bitten by my model railway bug in 1964. My father bought me my first Märklin HO train set in Stuttgart while we were on a visit to Germany. That was the basis for what has become my favorite hobby, which I have pursued enthusiastically ever since. The HO are on display in a showcase, but so that they can go for at least a short run occasionally, Lewis has built up two small but very attractive Z-gauge layouts. When I get home after a hard day's work, it's very relaxing to run the model railway for a while. It never fails to put me in a good mood. OK, all the wheels are on the rails. Take it away. Märklin always runs so well. Sí, es Märklin y funciona bien. Ahí está. La B200. This is the V200 diesel with silver panelled carriages. Looks great, doesn't it? Funcionando bien. José Luis Borio has quite a collection of HO gauge vehicles, but nowhere to run them because the apartment is too small. But he's looking for somewhere new. That's what we call a true fan, someone who moves house to make more room for his model railway collection. Now it's time to take a look at another railway legend, the Rheingold. It's always stood for the most luxurious form of travel. In 2003, the Rheingold celebrated its 75th birthday, and Märklin naturally decided to give the event the importance it deserved. The first big surprise was on April the 10th. Four cylinders, elegant appearance, it could only be the S36 from the Bavarian Rail Museum in Nördlingen. From that date, it sported genuine Rheingold blue paintwork with ivory for the cab and tender. A much smarter outfit than was ever worn by the Rheingold engines as they speeded along the banks of the Rhine. So why adopt it now? The answer is that Märklin was looking for a suitable 75th birthday present and has adopted the same colour scheme for its models. A successful birthday surprise, one that adds fresh glamour to the legendary Rheingold name. The mystery if the treasure sunk in the Rhine will remain unsolved, but here a few extra jewels to add to it in three track gauges. In this modified livery, it circles the track majestically, the most renowned of all German trains, the Rheingold. The carriages too are quite outstanding. They're made of sheet metal with a full interior and working table lamps.
Just like the grand old days back in 1928, when this star of the Deutsche Reichsbahn first ran from the North Sea to the Alps, travellers were able to ask themselves, why is it so beautiful on the Rhine? And see the answer in widescreen format outside the carriage windows. The very name Rheingold somehow conjures up fascination, elegance and mystique, as well as speed and luxury. There were three periods during which this train operated. The first was from 1928 until the outbreak of war in 1939. That was the Rheingold with its luxury Pullman saloon carriages. It took the attractive route along the Rhine that appealed to foreign visitors in particular. The second Rheingold had the word Express added to its name. It began to operate in 1951 but its carriages were distinctly less opulent in their furnishings. Before the war, the Rheingold consisted only of carriages with fully upholstered seats, but the situation after the war was different. Finally, from 1962 until nearly the end of the 80s, 1987, there was a Rheingold consisting of a set of air-conditioned carriages. The windows had electro-deposited gold surfaces. There was a separate restaurant car serving every seat in the train and, in the final years, even an entertainer on board. The legend lives on, although only as a museum train with an assortment of different carriages. It has matured with age and so its 75th birthday seemed a good opportunity to breathe new life into the Rheingold name. On its Easter outing, the Museum Rheingold sped along the bank of the River Rhine just as it did so long ago. Travelling in the Rheingold is still something rather special, even if the days of sheer luxury are gone forever. Cheers! Fine cuisine has a long tradition in the Rheingold. Delicious meals for the passengers emerged from the restaurant car's kitchen. The staff worked miracles to produce these masterpieces. Let's hear what the last cook on the Rheingold has to say. In those days all the ingredients were fresh. We peeled the potatoes and cooked the meat. Sometimes we served between two and three hundred meals, all from a kitchen measuring only four square meters. We were a hard-working team, but we never forgot to smile. I never enjoyed myself more at any other time in my life. Raimond Siegler traveled some of the most beautiful rail routes in the whole of Europe, but seldom had a chance to admire the view. The irony of the situation, his guests had twice the pleasure, his splendid meals and the view out of the windows. Life can be very unfair. On this occasion, the Rheingold was hauled proudly by express engine 01100. For the driver, the three-cylinder express engine, as it developed before the war, was something special. A living legend, you might say. Our next visit takes us from one German river to another, from the Rhine to the Filz, and the oldest model railway workshop in the world, where the Z-gauge Rheingold models are being built. The staff are very proud to be making these miniature masterpieces. To add to the luxury effect of the HO gauge models, the engine and carriages are made of metal, an unusual choice that emphasizes the high-class workmanship. The carriages have couplings with a continuous electrical circuit and the standard of finish in every detail tells us what these models represent, a genuine luxury train. In 1999, the Northlander was the star of the traditional Göppingen model railway meeting. Two years later, it was the Adler, and in 2003, the Bavarian S36 in its blue and gold Rheingold color scheme. On the weekend in May, when the meeting is held, the town of Göppingen changes its name to Märklin City. A large number of visitors decided to attend this supermodel railway weekend, including a complete trainload all the way from Cologne. At a time when most people are still asleep, the Rheingold carriages set off southwards from the cathedral city drawn by locomotive 103-184 in authentic livery. 
For the Rheingold itself and its passengers, there was a lot to look forward to during the journey through the vine-growing slopes of the Rhine Valley. In particular, arrival in Märklin city behind a very special engine. The final stage from Stuttgart to Göppingen was a triumph for the Rheingold, which arrived in a cloud of smoke and steam. Early on Saturday morning, the crowds began to gather, a visit that's both a duty and pleasure for the keen model railway enthusiast. Before long, the museum was overflowing. You may like to know that the Märklin Museum is now open from 10 in the morning onwards, seven days a week. In other words, on Sundays and public holidays as well. All these splendid exhibits can be seen free of charge, though it isn't every day that a model railway meeting is held, with formal speeches too. Männer werden wieder jung in Göppingen, jawohl. Göppingen, ladies and gentlemen, is where the men discover that they're still boys at heart. There's always a lot going on in Göppingen, certainly, and it's always worth a visit. But the Märklin company and Mr. Adams deserve a special thank you for the kind of publicity that the town itself could never afford. The insiders were invited to visit the old electricity generating station. In the distinguished decor of this building, the Insider Club celebrated its 10th birthday in appropriate style. Many of the members were very keen to see what a success had been made of the anniversary locomotive. This is the first time the German Series 10 in red has been seen on our layout and in the showcases of the old power station. This model is only offered to people who have been with the club for 10 years, in other words, the founder members. We plan to offer it later to everyone who has been a member for 10 years. There were plenty of other activities too, for example a diorama competition, which sometimes involved our members' entire families. I'd like to thank my wife and my mother-in-law who did most of the work on this diorama. It's amazing just what creative heights model railway enthusiasts of both sexes are capable of reaching. What better way for a married couple to avoid domestic strife than to do things together? The insiders produce some excellent dioramas for their 10th birthday competition, a most impressive display of the creative inspiration that so many model railway enthusiasts possess. Men from Mars on a beer wagon was one of the most extreme entries, but there were many other vehicle models that stimulated the imagination. Look, Dad, there's smoke coming out of the funnel. This young man's surprise is understandable when we see how realistic this maxi model of the S36 looks. It was on the Hungarian Merklin factory stand. The steamship made by the same factory also lived up to its name. It's a revival of a model dating from 1903. On this weekend, Göppingen certainly raised a fine head of steam and many visitors were infected by the steam virus. It was always elegant and still is today. The new Märklin paint job is certainly interesting. The size too. It's great to see these old original vehicles again. Oh yes, those were the days. And evidently, steam has lost none of its fascination. Without this earlier technology, our modern era would have lost track of something important. One can't praise the people who struggle to keep the old steam locomotives running highly enough. They want to preserve them in some shape or form for future generations. The Märklin weekend meeting plays its part as well. Short steam runs have always been an essential part of the programme at our meetings. Surely anyone's heart beats faster when they're standing in front of a big steam or electric locomotive. He never said a truer word. These are the moments when people tend to forget that Merklin actually builds model railways. The steam has entered every pore of one's being. Even the top Merklin executives are brushing the steam away from their eyes, which is obviously a very good sign. This is surely the right moment for a word of praise to those who helped to organize this meeting. Everything went off very well and there was plenty of liquid refreshment for everybody. When we refill the tanks or the tender, the smaller ones take 10 cubic meters, the big ones 30, depending on how much they consume and the work they've done. 
Food and drink keep body and cell together. This applies to steam engines as well as the people who run them. The ICE in the background isn't quite so demanding. As soon as it makes contact with the overhead wire, the power is there. Steam locomotives need a lot more attention. They not only need fuel and water, but there are also residues to be cleared out after every journey. They also need a few kind words occasionally. In Göppingen, as it happens, it was only a small step from the technology of the 19th to the 21st century. About a hundred visitors to the model railway meeting took up the Merkin Web Editor's Officer in the Civic Hall and had a selection of their best digital photos put on the internet. With the aid of a webcam, the whole world was able to see what was happening in Göppingen. There were more than 50,000 hits to these picture galleries. This was very interesting because I'm often on the internet myself. And in any case, the models are all going digital these days. In the Hornstaufen Hall, where the German league handball team Frischauf Göppingen normally plays, the ball was parked for a while in favour of the model rail tracks. Visitors could look closely, try things out for themselves, test their craft skills, or just pick up the information they needed. An excellent public, well informed, you could tell that from the questions they asked. After two hours of signing autographs, his wrist was stiff, but his good humor was still intact. The presenter of the German TV series Eisenbahn Romantik. This is a different style of writing. The pen works electronically. It seems a bit like black magic at work, but the explanation is quite simple. Visitors were having their own personal locomotive nameplates made. It's a personal memento of the visit. I've always liked them, and the chance to buy a personal one made up my mind for me. As young children, we probably saved up a few coins and bought some sweets. Now that we're a few years older, we're still prepared to do the same, even if it means spending a euro or two. But let's move on without delay to the next attraction, the city of Hamburg's information stand. Its miniature wonderland is already famous, and there are many other sights worth seeing too. I can't say it often enough. It's a super city, with so much to see that you could come every weekend and still discover something new. It's fascinating to see a big ship make itself small enough to go through such a small opening. Hold your breath, pull your stomach muscles in, and it's in the bottle. Who will be the first to try it with a steam locomotive? For that you'd need more than just a steady hand. All you need to put a ship in a bottle is patience, patience, and still more patience. It also helps to know the ropes, in every sense of the term, when you're deciding what to build. What shall I build? A good question. But if you can't answer it, remember that you're in Merklin City, the home of the friendly people who build model locomotives, and in doing so, provide employment for a lot of people. Merklin is as a firm Merklin is a company that thrives on technical innovation and precision mechanical skills, which makes it ideal for us. It hasn't had to cut its staff the way the local machine tool companies were forced to do. Merklin therefore remains one of our most important employers. Every party needs its host, including ours on the model railway adventure playground. I would say there was something for everybody, for the family, for the layout builder and for the railway model collector. The 2003 model railway meeting can surely claim to have been a total success. And the nicest thing of all is that the next one will be around before long. Let's look forward to 2005 and to raising steam once again in the town beneath the Hohenstaufen. Now it's time to look at a legendary diesel locomotive. No, I don't mean the German V200, which has been a Merklin model for more than 40 years. 
This time we have to jump the Atlantic Ocean and make the acquaintance of the American counterpart to our V200, the PA. It's just one of the latest Märklin models. You may not have heard or seen the great German comic actor Theo Lingen. He had a way of talking through the nose. And would probably have said, clear the road for Supernose. Supernose is the Alco company's PA locomotive. The code stands for a passenger train engine with cab, and Alco is short for the American Locomotive Company of Schenectady, New York. Alcos have almost entirely vanished from the railroad scene, but a few people are keeping them alive, including Doyle McCormack, a retired railroad engineer. This is the old Southern Pacific Roundhouse, and this area here was at one time one huge shop complex where they completely remanufactured steam locomotives. This is the last remaining roundhouse in the state of Oregon. Doyle McCormack was one of the people who rescued scrapped PA parts from Mexico, brought them back to the USA, and started to rebuild two of these historic engines. One of them belongs to McCormack himself. It's rail-borne again, and its famous nose has already been painted in the colors of the Nickel Plate Railroad. But as we can see, there's still a lot to be done. The NKP was a railroad company that operated several main lines in the Buffalo, St. Louis and Chicago areas. As a child, McCormack once rode on a nickel plate PA. Now he boards one every day and continues the task of restoring it to its former glory. This is the power plant or the heart of the locomotive. It's coupled to an electrical generator up there that makes electricity, goes through that control panel back there to all the motors on the engine that makes it go. It's a very simple engine to run. It only has the minimum controls. It's not like a steam locomotive where you have to manipulate everything. You put it that way, it's forward. All the way back there is reverse. But you put it in gear and then this is the throttle. As it comes out, it advances the engine. Alco PAs on US rails. Those days are past, but they may well return and sooner than we think. McCormack's second locomotive is to be finished in the colors of the Santa Fe. The work is being supported by the Smithsonian Institute, which preserves objects that form part of the U.S. heritage. Both these locos were originally delivered to the Santa Fe Railroad, but were sold off to the Delaware and Hudson later, and ended up finally in Mexico. McCormack was only able to rescue the empty carcasses from there, but has found almost identical bogies, engines and generators elsewhere, and installing them is already well advanced. We should be able to see McCormack PAs in front of trains again within a year or two. And here's the PA as a brand new Märklin model. Buyers of this model will be spared all the welding, riveting and painting work that the gallant restorers of the original have to put in. A quick jump across country now to Morristown, New Jersey. This is where we find Jim Boyd, an acknowledged Alco expert. Taking one of the earliest Alco engines as an example, he explains the background to the first 2,000 horsepower locomotive diesel that Alco installed in the PA. Right after the war, Alco thought they could really beat the market by producing 2,000 horsepower out of one diesel engine. And that's what they created with the PA. But the basis of the whole thing was this old cast iron beast right here, the Alco 539, that's still in service today. Modernized and modified versions of the PA engine are still at work in a number of locomotives. The Morristown and Erie Railroad, a short line, operates Alcos powered by this 251 engine exclusively. A pity. The rail joints interfere with the pure pleasure of listening to the Alco engine. Jim Boyd is familiar with every detail of the more recent Alco freight locomotives operated by the Morristown and Erie, but for him there's only one supernose. What made it be from the beginning a legend 
was that nose. <laughs> That's what did it. It was the look of the locomotive. That big square front and the fact that they had the good luck to have the first customer to be the Santa Fe. The Santa Fe ordered the war bonnet paint scheme, but that was only one reason for the PA's success. They were competing against steam locomotives. Uh, when you bought PAs, you generally put them on your passenger trains and retired your 484s. So they were on that, that beautiful uprush of business when the diesel was the thing of the future, the steam was the dirty, dark past, it's going away, and they just simply rode the crest of the wave. There were also smaller versions of the PA in Europe. Alco developed it into a world locomotive that looked very similar and was also available with a large diesel engine. It was sold to Brazil, Spain, Greece and elsewhere. One of the locomotives shipped to Greece is still in running order. It's only used for special trains, but it attracts a lot of attention or sometimes draws attention to itself by the noise it makes. Back to steam now for some more American originals and their models. You'll see both alternately in the sequences that follow. The Texas State Railroad is a museum railroad operating in the eastern part of that state. It has a number of diesel engines in use, but also various steam locomotives, including the 400, a Mikado. This is a Mikado type engine that they made during World War II to, for Japan. The emperor had ordered some of this style engine with a 282 wheel arrangement. And uh, this one never did go, and uh, the uh, Texas and Pacific Railway bought this one in Louisiana. The new Merklin HO gauge model on our layout is also fully operational. It's a replica of number 1890, which used to run on the New York Central Railroad. The original exports to Japan are the reason engines with a 282 wheel layout are known as Mikados. This is the wooden station building in Palestine, which looks as if it had been built in the late 19th century. In actual fact, it's only 25 years old. The line between Palestine and Rusk, on the other hand, has been there for more than a century. Its history is rather unusual. It was built by prisoners belonging to the two prisons in Palestine and Rusk, and was actually operated by the prisoners themselves until the 1920s. The depots are located outside the towns of Palestine, where we are now, and Rusk is 25 miles of track between the two depots. So it's a 50-mile round trip. There are many shots in our film in which it's almost impossible to distinguish between the model and the original. This is the model. And this is the full-size original. The New York Central locomotive in 1 to 87 scale was warmly welcomed by the model railway fraternity in 2003. Its sound module is governed by its actual speed. Its whistle sounds, its bell rings, and with the aid of the control unit, it has a digital delay switch for starting and braking. Listen to this, the unmistakable sound of the Texas State Railroad's 400. It was built by Baldwin in 1917 and has been making the run between Rusk and Palestine for the past 20 years. Unlike the Merklin model, it has a Vanderbilt tender. Our compliments to the US state of Texas. Back in the 70s, it rescued the abandoned railroad line and transformed it into a living rail museum. One of the few that still has two active steam locomotives to admire. One of them is the Mikado. But if you want to see a Mikado, there's no need to fly out to Texas. The 1 to 87 scale model Mikado, made in Germany, is a splendid substitute.
Many of the tools and equipment, the locomotives and rolling stock of a railway are genuine works of art, and the same goes for model railways too. For the first time ever, this idea has been taken up by an art museum. The art gallery in Tübingen staged an exhibition that attracted a large number of visitors. Remarkable things happened at the art gallery in Tübingen between November 2003 and February 2004. Instead of the varied paintings normally hung there, the rooms were given over to exhibits that not everyone would accept as works of art, despite the skill that has gone into creating them. Tübingen had decided to display model railways and many other products and artefacts associated with the Märklin Company's 145-year history. The catalogues that Märklin produced in its first years were almost one-off items. All the sheets were produced painstakingly by hand. The pictures are a constant source of delight, even though more than a century has now elapsed. This obvious affection for the model railway has always been a fundamental factor, though from time to time one that needed to have more attention drawn to it. The Kunsthalle Tübingen was looking for an unusual idea and hit upon this passage through the mountain. The mountain is in two halves so that you can explore the space in between. It takes a lot of effort to build a layout intended to run continuously. Many people were involved and many hours of work were necessary. The director of the Tübingen Art Gallery played a considerable part in the decision to hold this exhibition. As a small boy, Professor Goetz Adriani played with model trains and is prepared to admit that the fascination is still there. I built my first model trains in 43 or 44 from empty cigar boxes. When I think back, I see it in my mind's eye as just as perfect as a modern one, built, say, in 2000. How many generations of children have played with the Märklin metal construction kits, even if the results were mostly more modest than this? There were also products that didn't have to be assembled first. Production started up again in 1945, but there was no market for model railways in those post-war years. The company designed and built a fuel-saving cooking stove instead. It could heat the room as well as cooking meals. Looking back, that too strikes me as a fascinating topic. Before long, the circle was complete and Märklin began to build doll's house kitchens and utensils. But the stoves that Märklin built after the war had been forgotten, though there were more than 5,000 of them heated electrically. Steam was left to other products in the company's catalogue. Märklin sold a complete range of toys. It made just about everything at that time, including the stationary steam engines that appealed to me so much as a child, and steam-driven model railway locomotives. In the 1908 to 1909 season, for instance, there were about 80 different model steam engines in the catalogue. Märklin always kept up with the times. When the modern autobahn highways were built towards the end of the 1930s, there were Märklin models in the children's playrooms, and Zeppelin airships too. Back in the days when Germany had a Kaiser and a strong navy was his chief interest, Märklin also built warships, some of them immensely large. The children of the rich in those days must have had plenty of room to play in. For many years the model railway was a seasonal guest in the living room, which was transformed into an imaginary railway landscape for a week or two in the school holidays. This is how Goetz Adriani remembers it in his childhood home. Later, his treasured model trains languished in the attic for many years, until November 2003. I inherited those Gage 1 trains in 1945 from my father and grandfather and played with them for several years. How happy the children must have been to have such toys. At least when we look back, we feel that it must have been that way. Visitors to Tübingen were delighted with what they saw, and many of them found themselves reminiscing about their own childhood. 
Ah yes, the HO trains, those are the ones I grew up with. Isn't it nice to see them again? And completely carried away. Naturally, it brings back memories of when we were young. I run a toy shop and it gives me a lot of pleasure to sell Merklin model railways. The exhibition in Tübingen was an enormous success. More than 60,000 people came to revel in the wonderful world of Merklin. The echo in the media was equally strong and there was much praise for this temple of the arts having opened its doors to the humble model railway. Another premiere was celebrated in Tübingen, Merklin's Mount Rushmore with its world record series 89 locomotive hewn into the stone as a gesture of thanks for sales having reached the five million mark and also to the makers of this impressive exhibition. Now let's take to the full-size railway once again as a means of introducing you to a major new development on the model railway scene. When I was very young, I played with my Merklin model trains. A few years later, my biggest ambition was to become an engine driver. In the future, I shall have the good fortune of combining these two wishes with the new Merklin digital system. Take a closer look, it'll whet your appetite. Mobile, colorful and with a rhythmic backing. Here it comes, Merklin's new digital world. It was presented with a bang to trade dealers at an event held in Göppingen. The first round of applause from this expert public wasn't too enthusiastic. After all, who wants to be sold a gold brick? So let's waste no time in revealing the new digital world. It's known as Merklin Systems, and this small unit that's so pleasant to hold in the hand is the mobile station. The LC display shows the locomotive names, and there are clearly designed pictograms for the relevant functions. There is also a new decoder. When you put a locomotive with a new MFX decoder on the rails, it logs into our central or mobile station and tells you I'm here, ready to run, and with the following functions available. You don't have to know what they are in advance. The display tells you the functions that are available and where to select them. A new development that may make you whistle too. Just like that. With just a single mobile station, the Merklin enthusiast has up to 10 locomotives under control. A controller for their speed, a booster to supply current to the rails, and the central electronics, where the control commands are collected and supplied to the track as a digital signal. The big central station will have even more to offer. Two controllers, a touch screen with graphics capacity, and 16 buttons for special functions. The LC display on the center of the unit tells you at a glance what is currently moving, emitting smoke or steam, whistling, or has its lights in use on your layout. This is leading edge model railway fun. The mobile station is the perfect entry level unit, the future available now. It comes with the starter packs and opens the door for digital train control. The customer will find that it's never been easier to use integrated digital technology, the simple form of electronic communication. The function keys and the controller are easy to operate with a thumb or index finger. The choice of locomotive is equally easy. You select it from an integral database and start operating it by way of the menu. Older models can also be included. This is good news. Merklin Systems is absolutely compatible with classic digital equipment from Merklin. It was never easier to access the Merklin digital world. 
This is a genuine sensation from Göppingen and one that has many pleasant surprises in store. Das war ein Jahr mit Märklin. That was a year with Märklin. I hope you enjoyed what we showed you in this film. And I can promise you this, we shall be back at full steam next year too. Until then, all the best from Märklin and myself and good railroading.
65, 56 nach Bettenhausen als das.
Etage runter? Ja. Ja, bevor wir den 8908 dann übernehmen, kann man uns noch was gönnen. Ja, sollten wir das essen. Das wird später heute. Und was gibt's bei dir? Immer dasselbe. Leber war gerade. Aber was soll man anders mitnehmen? Und bei dir sieht's anders aus. Oh, mal was Neues. 82. Oh, eine Rego, ja. Schön. Thank you.